हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर गजेंद्र पुरोहित यू आर वॉचिंग यूट्यूब चैनल वेर वी अपलोड वीडियोज फॉर इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स एंड बी एस सी आई एम टीचिंग इनफाइनाइट सीरीज प्रीवियसली I had explained about conditions when an infinite series is convergent and divergent and I had also discussed alternating series I have uploaded many videos about it you can check them out by going to itab so students today i will discuss the concept of abel and dirichlet theorem with all of you we will see how to apply it to a particular series when we are given a series of products of two sequences and students you are supposed to find out whether this series will be convergent or not to solve this question we have the concepts of abel and dirichlet meaning the concept proposed by their theorem is used we will see what are those and how to figure out whether a series is convergent or not i'll discuss all these things in today's class we'll discuss dirichlet theorem which states that for two sequences un and vn if any infinite series of its products is given then it will be convergent if the first sequence satisfies these conditions it should be monotonically decreasing and it should tend to zero and what was the second series the second series was vn series right students so we should be getting its sops as bounded if this happens then this series will be called convergent let's take an example summation n is equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 raised to the power of n minus 1 multiplied by 1 divided by n so we will take un as 1 divided by n right and once that is established means un is equal to 1 upon n we will take this vn as minus 1 raised to the power of n so students we know that the first sequence which is 1 upon n is monotonically decreasing right and it is approaching zero at n tends to infinity if i discuss about this then what will be its sops we are getting its sops as minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 so it will proceed like this we will get its s1 as minus 1 the s2 will come as 0 s3 will also come this way what happens is that s2 is the sum of the first two terms so it will be 0 s3 will be the sum of first three terms we will again get minus 1 here in this manner we will get its sops the term for sops will be minus 1 0 minus 1 and so on and so forth this will be bounded and the range is between minus 1 and 0 hence its range set is bounded meaning the sops we get will be bounded it means the vn will be bounded and then the un we will get will be monotonically decreasing and it is tending to zero what does this imply this means that the product will be convergent by the dirichlet theorem right students now we will discuss about the abel theorem so what does it say abel's theorem is also based on the same concept but it gets a little different if we are getting to sequences when does their product become convergent i mean when is the product's infinite series convergent if the first sequence meaning if the first un sequence we are getting should be monotonic and bounded what did we see in case of dirichlet we found that if it's monotonically decreasing and tending to zero but these things are not necessary here what are we getting it can either be decreasing or increasing both work but it should be bounded in second condition what are we getting for the vn it should be a convergent series right students if that happens then what will we get in that case we will get the infinite series which is formed by their product as convergent For example let's take a scenario where we are given an infinite series in this example of infinite series we have this 1 upon n square given here now we will take two sequences un and vn so students what will we get 1 upon n square as what will it be i will take this vn as 1 upon n square and i took this un as 1 plus 1 by n whole raised to the power of minus n let's take a look at this and write it properly i will do one thing i will write it a little down if i write it properly here then i will find that we get it as 1 upon 1 plus 1 upon n whole raised to the power n and we will get this sequence as monotonic at n tends to infinity this will be 1 divided by e from this we can conclude that it is monotonic and it is also bounded now when we come to this vn you can see that i have taken it as 1 upon n square so if i talk about its infinite series then what will i get we will get that its infinite series is being convergent with the p series we are getting this as convergent and we are getting this as bounded so students by abel test the product of these two will be convergent hence in this way we can easily prove this now we are given a question here it is asking us to test the convergence of the series given on screen how shall we proceed first i will take you n as n raised to the power 1 by n then i will take vn as sin n upon n square so if we look at this un we get it as both monotonic and bounded at n tends to infinity value will be 1 this is also monotonic now let's talk about vn we will see whether 
summation Vn is convergent or not. We know that the value of this is 1 upon n square and we know that this series is 1 upon n square which is convergent by the P series test meaning we will get sin n. Upon n square series is convergent. What does it mean? We can conclude that it will be convergent. This will be bounded. So, what will we get the product of these two as? The product of these two will be n power 1 divided by n into sin n. Upon n square, what does it imply? It means product of un and vn is convergent. We get product of un and vn is convergent by Abel theorem. Let's proceed now. I will explain this again with the help of another question. I have already covered these type of questions previously. If you haven't watched those videos, you can access them through iTab. Coming back to this, how can we prove whether it is convergent or not by using a Bell theorem? Let's see how to solve this. Summation n is equal to from 1 to infinity. So, we will get under root n power 4 plus 1 minus under root n power 4 minus 1 upon n. Let's rationalize it. So, students, we will get under root n power 4 plus 1 plus under root n power 4 minus 1 whole divided by under root n power 4 plus 1 plus under root n power 4 minus 1. What do we get now? Here, we are getting a minus b into a plus b as a square minus b square. From this, we get n raised to power 4 plus 1 minus n power 4 minus 1. So, this will come in numerator divided by n into under root n power 4 plus 1 plus under root n power 4 minus 1. Here, n power 4 is cancelling n power 4. We are getting summation n is equal to 1 to infinity and I will write this as 1 upon n and 2 divided by under root of n to the power 4 plus 1 plus under root of n to the power 4 minus 1. I will take one of them as un and one as vn. So, we are getting un as 1 divided by n and all of us are aware that it is monotonic and it is bounded because at n tends to infinity, this will become 0. In the same way, if I talk about vn and take it as 2 upon under root of n power 4 plus 1 plus under root of n power 4 minus 1, right? Now, what should we do after this? We will find out whether this series is convergent or not. To solve this, I will take a series for comparison. We will apply a comparison test to this. I will take a pn series which is of the type 1 upon n square. We will get limit. And tends to infinity, vn divided by pn. Students, we have got this here. Where we are getting the value as finite, we will get vn as limit. And tends to infinity, it will be 2 divided by under root of n power 4 plus 1 plus under root n power 4 minus 1. When I take this pn in denominator, then it will be inverted. In numerator, we will get n square. Take n power 4 common, n square will cancel n square. At n tends to infinity, the value is 1. We should be getting a non-zero finite value here. If it becomes true, then behavior of both of them would be same. We already know that series is convergent with p series. Means this is convergent. So, we will get this series as convergent. What does this indicate? It means we get summation vn as convergent series. And we will get this as monotonic. So, students, we are getting it as monotonic as well as bounded. So, by a bell test, what will we get? We will get their product as convergent, right? In this way, we can solve such questions very easily. Now, in uniform convergence as well, we will find theorems like these. Let's take an example. We are given two sequences and we have to find whether the function of the product of those sequences has uniform convergence or not. So, I have made and uploaded the video on this. If you haven't watched it, you can go to iTab and watch it. Now, we have to test the convergence of series given here which is sin n upon n factorial. How should we go about solving this question students? What if you get this type of question in your exam? How to figure out whether to use Dreechle or Abel to solve it? The answer is if you are given any series of type un to vn and if one of them is convergent then you should use Abel to solve that question. And in case none of the two series is convergent, we will apply Dreechle theorem to solve that question. Here in this question neither sin n nor n factorial is convergent, right? So, to solve this question, the first thing I will do is take un as 1 divided by n factorial and I will take vn as sin n. Now, students, what can we conclude after taking a look at this? We are getting un as monotonically decreasing and students, we are getting it as tending to 0 as well. Now, coming to vn, what should we get this vn as? Tell me what should the vn be in this situation? It should be bounded. And if we talk about vn, what should be its SOPS? So, students, we should be getting SOPS of vn as bounded. So, we should be getting the S1 in SOPS of the sequences, sin n1. Then we get the SOPS as sin n1 plus sin n2. So, it will form in this pattern. And we know the range of this sign will ultimately lie between minus 1 and 1. So, from this, we will get the SOPS of S as bounded. So, we are getting its SOPS as bounded. And we are getting this as monotonically decreasing and it will be equal to 0 at n tends to infinity. So, we will get their product as convergent by the Dreechle theorem. 
in this way we can very easily understand and solve this question now this question is for the comment box please be sure to let me know that how many seconds did it take for you to solve it you can find more videos like this along with the complete playlist of infinite series here if you are preparing for csir net gate and iit gem exams and if you want to improve short tricks you can watch my videos please subscribe to my channel if you like them thank you so much bye bye